Let us begin this celebration in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and communion with the Holy Spirit be with you all. As we prepare to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sinfulness, our shortcomings. Lord Jesus, you were sent to heal the contrite. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you came to call sinners. Christ have, mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you plead for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O oh God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, and the glory of God our Father. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, who through the grace of adoption chose us to be children of light, grant, we pray, that we may not be wrapped in the darkness of error, but always be seen to stand in the brightest light of truth. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the second book of Kings. One day Elijah came to Shunem, for there was a woman of influence who urged him to dine with her. Afterward, whenever he passed by, he used to stop there to dine. So she said to her husband, I know that Elijah is a holy man of God. Since he visits us often, let us arrange a little room on the roof and furnish it for him with a bed, table, chair, and lamp, so that when he comes to us, he can stay there. Sometimes later, Elijah arrived and stayed in the room overnight. Later, Elijah asked, can something be done for her? His servant Gehazi answered, yes. She has no son, and her husband is getting on in years. Elijah said, call her. When the woman had been called and stood at the door, Elijah promised, this time next year, you'll be fondling a baby son. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the book of the Psalms. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. The promises I will sing the goodness of the Lord. The promises of the Lord I will sing forever through all generations. My mouth shall proclaim your faithfulness. For you have said my kindness is established forever. In heaven you have confirmed your faithfulness. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. Blessed the people who know the joyful shout. In the light of your countenance, O Lord, they walk. At your name they rejoice all the day, and through your justice they are exalted. Forever I will sing, I will sing the goodness, goodness of, the of the Lord. You are the splendor of their strength, and by your favor our horn is exalted. For to the Lord belongs our shield, and the Holy One of Israel our King. Forever I will, I will sing, sing the, the goodness, goodness of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, are you unaware that we who were baptized in Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were indeed buried with him through baptism into death, so that 
just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live in newness of life. If then we have died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. We know that Christ raised from the dead dies no more. Death no longer has power over him. As to his death, he died to sin once and for all. As to his life, he lives for God. Consequently, you must think of yourselves as dead to sin and living for God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. You are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. Announce the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his apostles, Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take up his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. Whoever finds his life will lose it. Whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. Whoever receives you receives me. And whoever receives me receives the one who sent me. Whoever receives a prophet because he is a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And whoever sees a righteous man because he is righteous man will receive a righteous man's reward. Whoever gives only a cup of cold water to one of the little ones to drink because the little one is a disciple. Amen, I say to you, he will surely not lose his reward. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Again, I must say, it's good to be preaching to people. For some time I've been preaching to that cell phone. On Monday of this week, I will have the honor of celebrating the life and death of the life and the birth to new life of our, one of our parishioners. This man was a man of God. He was a man who welcomed all with a smile and with great care. Whenever I spoke with him, he would always end with, I love you, Father. He had many challenges in his health in his latter days. But throughout his life, he touched many lives as husband, as father, as friend. Listening to Benny speak about him, He was a man who lived his faith, 
even in the face of uncertainty. His wife said to me, Father, he was a man of God. The bishops of the Second Vatican Council made a statement that summarizes well what Christian life is all about. They wrote, the Lord Jesus, the divine teacher and model of all perfection, preached holiness of life to each and every one of his disciples, regardless of their situation. You are to be perfect, even as your heavenly Father is perfect. It's found in the Gospel of Matthew. He himself stands as the author and finisher of all holiness of life. For he sent the Holy Spirit upon all of us, that the Holy Spirit might inspire us from within the love of God and their whole heart, their whole soul, with all their mind, with all their strength, and that they might love one another as Christ loved them. This is evident to everyone that all the faithful in Christ of whatever rank or status are called to the fullness of the Christian life and to the perfection of charity and holiness. All three scriptures tonight call us to the fullness of Christian life. Jesus wants to be more than just an item on our priority list. He wants to be one with us. At times, we as a people might have fallen onto the habits of viewing our faith commitment as just one among the many important things that we must need to attend to. Our God desires to be in a relationship with us. Whether we're in this building or not. Our God desires us to embrace his love in today's gospel Jesus raises the stakes dramatically suggesting that faith in him requires much more than just rearranging one's prior Faith requires more. Jesus demands of his followers a complete, unwavering commitment. Jesus seems almost harsh in his dismissal of family concerns or other demands on our time that we might offer as mitigating circumstances. He responds, no excuses. Jesus seems out of step with our mentality today that is nearly obsessed with to-do lists and multitasking. Jesus says, in effect, this is only one truly important task. Matthew, in his presentation on the teaching, is almost always concerned to point out the tangible, practical, and even the painful consequences of making a faith commitment. 
It's not easy. It's not easy to say, I'm with Jesus. Or yes, I'm a Christian. Matthew has Jesus insisting that a tree is known by the fruit it bears. Matthew makes giving aid to our neighbor in need a sole criteria for reward and punishment. At first glance, we might say to ourselves, he can't be serious. Yes, it strikes us as quite unreasonable to family and friends. We don't want to read this literally. Jesus is suggesting that we commit wholeheartedly to God. The other things that are pressing concerns in our lives will fall into place. Once we commit to Jesus, we will know the rewards of a better family life, better relationships, more fulfillment at work, and genuine peace of mind. To follow Jesus, there is much to be gained. Our gospel today presses on us the sometimes painful truth that Jesus doesn't want to be part-time disciples. He don't want us part-time. Wholeheartedly. People who see their faith as one thing among several important th items on the to-do list of life. Jesus wants to be the one thing above all others in our lives. He wants us to make the choice before it is too late. It's been refreshing to hear the people of God say to me, Father, we missed the Eucharist. We miss the transformation the Eucharist gives us every time we receive it. Perhaps this is a reflection of who we are. People who embodies Christ. But to receive is to be transformed, to be like God himself. St. Augustine says, become what we have received. Become agents of God's love, even in the midst of this pandemic, even in the midst of all this turmoil and uncertainty. We turn now to this table, the table of the Eucharist. It is in this Eucharist that we focus most dramatically on our faith commitment. To approach this Eucharist requires faith. It is here that we remember to put Jesus first. I went to give my friend and your friend, a parishioner of this parish, before his death. He received 
the Eucharist. And his response was astounding. Because his response was an agent of love, even in the midst of suffering. Thank you, Father. I love you. Amen. Stand now and profess our faith. I believe in one God. Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. Son of God. God from God, light from light, true God from true God. Begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate with the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. Then rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic apostolic church confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. God of life, death, and resurrection, we bring our own words of prayer before you today. For the church universal, that it would not grow complacent will pursue goodness no matter the cost. We pray to the Lord. Okay. For those in authority, that they will seek life and care for those under their protection. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us who seek to follow, you yet lack the courage to bear your cross. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have indeed borne your cross, that they may find new life in Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those in our own community who struggle to handle hardship in a way that honors you, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the repose of the soul of Billy Howard, the consolation of his family and friends, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. With grateful hearts, we dedicate these prayers to your care, confident in your power to make life and make it new. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Bless to you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever.
Bless to you, Lord God of our creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the earth, work of human hands. It will become for us a spiritual drink. Lord, wash away my iniquities and cleanse me of my sins. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. O God, who graciously accomplish the effects of your mysteries, grant, we pray, that the deeds by which we, get, we serve you may be worthy of these sacred gifts through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And lift your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent us our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin, fulfilling your will and gaining for your holy people. He stretched out his hands and endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glorious with one voice we have come. Holy, holy. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord God of hosts, heaven, heaven and earth are, are full of your Lord. glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes, comes in the name Lord. of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The time is betrayed, and it's a will and his passion. He took bread and gave him thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray, by partaking of the body and blood of Christ, be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. We bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Stephen, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who've fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who've died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life. We may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, our glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
And lead us not into temptation. Into temptation. But deliver, but deliver us, us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we're always free from sin and safe from all distress, as to await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grace to grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy, mercy on us. Lamb of God, God you, you take, take away the sins of the world. Have, have mercy, mercy on us. Lamb, Lamb of God, God you take, take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my room, but only say the word in my soul. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. May this divine sacrifice we have offered and received fill us with life, O Lord, we pray, so that bound to you in lasting charity, we have fruit that lasts forever through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit.